What's the deal you guys? It's your boy back at it with another video and today I got a banger for you guys, no cap. In this video, we're going to be talking about the case of Ka Pasasu. Now, I never really did time with bro, we weren't in the same dorm together ever, but I did go to court with him the day he got his life sentence. Actually, the day he got his death penalty, that shit was crazy. And on that same day, there was another little homie from Asian Boys that also got the life sentence. So they were handing out elbows like they like it was no fucking tomorrow. So we're going to get into all that. If you guys are new to the channel, what's good? My name is Sergio. I've been to LA County Jail, went to juvenile, pro juvenile detention centers, probation camp, been homeless for two years and all of that. I've been out for going on five years now. So if you guys want to follow my story, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell notification because goof YouTube is goofy as hell with these notifications. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's topic of the video. We are following breaking news this morning. Four people have been shot to death outside a house in Northridge. The home is located in the 17,000 block of Devonshire Street. CBS 2's Art Barron is live at the scene where detectives are still trying to figure out what happened. Having waived extradition along with three others, suspected Northridge shooter Cobb Pasasuk will be returned to Los Angeles. He'll face four murder counts for the Northridge homicide Sunday outside a boarding house. 11 months out of prison, Pasasuk had been under the supervision of the probation department. I never directly asked bro about his case because that's not what you really want to do when you know somebody's potentially fighting life. But from what I've read about the situation, Pasasuk was robbing a dude named Navales outside of a boarding house. Now, I've actually lived inside of a boarding house in Korea and you call it a Hazuk Jeep. And it's basically like a big house that's been converted into like multiple living spaces, like a shared living space, shared restrooms, like multiple refrigerators on each floor. Overall, pretty much like a sober living house, minus all the rules and the curfew and stuff like that. Now, of course, they don't condone drug use, but it's just basically a sober living with a lot more freedoms, a bunch of people that have jobs there, and some of the Hazard Jeeps offer food. But anyway, that's besides the point. According to court documents about Bro's case, the prosecutor said Pasasuk was enraged by a breakup with his girlfriend. He also wanted revenge on Navales, who had intervened months earlier in an incident of domestic violence involving Pasasuk and Navales, where Navales beat up Pasasuk with a golf club. Now we're gonna I'm gonna start calling Pasasuk Ka for short, just so you guys don't get confused. So needless to say, Navales and Ka had a past beef. Pasasuk thought Novales and his friends would be carrying lots of cash on their way to the casino and the plan was to rob them. When the two women showed up, Amanda and Jennifer, Ka's plan fell apart. He shot Novales first and then proceeded to shoot the other three people, Calabia, Amanda and Jennifer, in the back of the head as they tried to run away. The motive for killing the other three people besides Navales was to silence the witnesses. Police do say that all of the victims were found face down. So at this point, uh, they are going to check. They are, they are looking for a suspect at this point. Until we know anything further, that's what they're going to be doing. So for now, it is a public uh, safety concern as they continue to look for a suspect who shot four people dead outside of a house along Devonshire Street. But I couldn't find a picture of Jennifer Kim's actual... I, I couldn't confirm if this was the actual Jennifer because, truth be told, there are a lot of Jennifer Kims that live out here in L.A. or in California in general, so pinpointing the exact person and the picture was kind of hard, so I do apologize for that. But Ka definitely had, uh, needless to say, a troubled upbringing. Apparently, by the age of 14, he already had a bunch of cases and um, by 15 years old, probation department was trying to get a hold of his parents and they couldn't get a hold of his parents. Now, that's never really a good thing. That's not something you want to hear when fucking probation can't get a hold of your parents at the age of 15. You know, um, I, I don't know bro like that, but I'm gonna say that there was some type of dysfunctional family going on, if you know what I'm saying. Basically, when you're housed in Wayside Supermax, um, they have a dorm specifically for people that are fighting life and the death penalty and stuff like that. So obviously I wasn't in inside that dorm, you feel me? But um, bro was, and we actually ran into each other on the court bus. So basically how court works in Wayside is um, you wake up early as shit, you catch a bus back to Men's Central Jail. And then from Men's Central Jail, everybody's divided up into different buses that correspond to the courthouse they go to. Since there's so many different cases in so many different courthouses, there's basically court tanks within Med Central Jail, and you wait for the second bus to get to court, 
And then after court, you take the bus back to Mass Central Jail, and then you go back to Wayside or wherever your house at. You feel me? Whenever you're on these buses, they tend to chain you up with your own race or whoever you're rocking with. Like if you're Asian or other, you're chained up with other, the other Asians and the blacks. If you're a Southsider, you chained up with the other Southsiders. And if you're a Wood, you're chained up with the Southsiders and the Woods because they're clicked up together in the county. And this is exactly where I met Ka at. Since we were both Asian, we got chained up together. We actually sat right next to each other going to court and coming back. When I ran into dude, he seemed like a normal ass dude, like no cap, like, but bro was on swell mode, like for real, like dude was big. And we were chopping it up and shit. And he was telling me about his tattoos, about how he wanted to be like on tattoo magazines and shit. And like, just judging by the, the um, what do you say? The quality of his work, shit was good, dude. Like none of his fucking work was garage. Like I know there's that one tattoo on his stomach, but I think he was in like the process of getting that finished when he got arrested, when this whole thing was happening. And yeah, bro, like dude was normal as hell. Like, and in my honest opinion, I feel like these murders would not have happened if he wasn't under the influence of drugs. Now, is that a big speculation? I don't know because according to court documents, bro had past charges of methamphetamine possession. So it's really, um, it really is no speculation that he was in that scene. Now, judging by this next clip, you can see how skinny bro looked. And I'm gonna show you a picture right after that showing you, you can't really tell because he's behind the cage in the second picture, but bro looks small as hell. So just judging by that clip, you can tell bro was looking a lot smaller. This is basically a robbery that has gone horribly wrong. So like I said, I caught the bus back with bro when he first got sentenced to death. And I sat right next to him on the bus ride back from um, Men's Central Jail back to Wayside. And that bus ride was fucking eerie, dude. It was crazy just sitting next to somebody that just got sentenced to death. This was one of my most eye-opening moments in county jail that really made my time go by like it was nothing. Because just judging from what this man was going through next to me and I was tripping about my little two-year bullshit case that I might have to go to prison, like it really humbled me and made me realize like shit could be so much worse. I remember bro was crying because on the, on the bus ride back, they tend to play music and sometimes they take requests and bro asked for them to play a song for him. I wish I could remember what that song was, but I just can't. It was so long time ago and I was in the moment. But yeah, bro was just crying on the way back to freaking to jail. And I mean, understandably so, man, I fell for bro. And it just really made me realize like shit could have been just as bad for me because I was out there on a bunch of substances, jacking people, burglarizing, all types of shit. And it could have gone just as bad. And I wouldn't be standing right here in front of you guys today to tell you my story. Could have been just as tragic as bros, but this should just be a lesson to anybody out there that's really on some fucking shit and robbing people and doing doing the most with all the extras. Like this could this could happen to you, man. Like you never know. When you're under the influence, like shit is unpredictable. And that goes for law abiding citizens and criminals. Like it doesn't discriminate. My heart goes out to all the family members. You never really want to hear about shit like this. It's just tragic. Them being at the wrong place at the wrong time, like man, like that shit is crazy. And I didn't really know, like I said, I didn't know dude from the streets like that. Um, I can't really speak on what type of person he was growing up. There's not much information. I tried reaching out to family members and stuff, but this has been like a pretty old case, so I couldn't really get a response. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like I said, I've been trying to polish my other videos up a lot more. This is definitely going to be a video series on my channel. I'm going to be covering a lot of different cases. I was actually locked up with one or two other people that are pretty prolific and they also got the life and death penalty. So those videos are coming, but you guys are going to have to wait. So if you guys don't want to miss those videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification. Like I said, if you didn't like the video, leave me something in the comments section. I love going over input with you guys, criticism, all that. But until next time, you guys, I'll be seeing you guys later. Peace.
is going to be a pain on our hearts and on our family. I feel happy that justice is served and this is finally over. It has affected us like emotionally 